Welcome back to Monday Night Smite. Adonis joined by Anatoly for our games today. We've got two sets, um, maybe not, you know, playoff implications looking at DreamHack right now, but I think some pretty important games for uh, Allegiant specifically who have made multiple roster changes. They made a run right now, weekend joining the squad of Allegiant's boys. They've beaten Envy 2-0 and they're yes. looking very strong. Randoso struggling a little bit to get out of relegations. We'll see how this matchup Pantone. Over, you know, enemy, um, or excuse me, uh, enemy, yeah, uh, almost dropped a, a game to Randozos. Randozos is still struggling to, to close out, but we always see them, like, come close, right? And honestly, with how close North America is right now, the top teams only separated by a couple wins. We've seen, you know, Denial really start to make a surge recently in their past couple of sets. We could see Randozos play spoilers for some of these top teams. We mentioned that they were the gatekeepers in terms of getting into DreamHack. They split against Luminosity. They split against Envious as well. Can we see them preventing allegiance from getting out of the relegations as well. Uh, right now, though, at the top of the charts, it is still Soar Gaming, followed by Eager and Enemy. Um, how do you feel, or excuse me, Enemy and then Eager, how do you feel about these teams? Do you do you feel like they're safe? They do have a couple games advantage right now over LG and Denial. I don't think any team is realistically safe. Soar might be safe in terms of the one through three spot, but they can easily shift between second and third right now. Luminosity and Denial at four and five, they can easily squeeze in as well. So it's a very tight race, same, similar to the European side of things. And um, Allegiance versus Randozas. How do you feel about this match going in? I think going into this matchup, it's going to be dependent on how Allegiance can dis establish themselves with an early lead. Weaken controlling the pack has that leadership now for the rest of his team. Incon in the front line as well. Lass's supporting cast. I think it's going to be really dominant. It's going to be up to Randozos to kind of stall them out and get their own pace of the game. Well, we'll see if Randozos can do just that as we head into game one. Detonate for the secure, and it's gonna go to Allegiance. Oh, it's stolen. That might have been a con. No follow-up from the rest of Allegiance. Oh, there the comes Kraken. the Kraken. It's gonna find four. Lassus takes out Panda. Nice shots from Oceans as well. What Where is that? Come was from? That? Picks and bands. Randozo is going to be rocking the order side. Chaos for Allegiance. The way Allegiance prioritizes their picks and bands, in the soul lane specifically, we see a lot of Amana and Bologna coming out of Matty Pocket. We'll see if Randozo is adapt to that, whether they'll ban it away or whether they'll stick to their guns, putting Osiris on Walrus and looking to be a big bully in that lane. Wow. Uh, I mean, looking away from the soul lane, Scylla first banned. And I think we're going to start to see this band out a little bit more. She's only received a, a single buff this split, but it was very early on. And since then, we've really started to see some of these top teams dominate with her. Especially the way Allegiance played their last set against Envious with a Scylla. Last is playing Lights Out. Oh, even, yeah. He was so confident that he even put Blink on Scylla and made a lot of good plays aggressively. So, you know, go into more detail because you played with Last for a long time. He's always been the player to go away from the traditional style of getting two defensive actives and he goes into these blinks you know on any mid any mid mage we've seen it on the Agna we've seen it on the side and then more recently the Scylla he's a playmaker and he always looks for those aggressive opportunities if you give him an inch he's going to take a mile so that's something you have to respect and that's why they're banning away the Scylla and an early game Isis as well uh, Raijin going to be locked away from Aduro so four or excuse me three mages banned it's going to be Naja as well kept away from the hands of Skeelan on one of the gods we've seen him go back to, I think, quite frequently. A very good aggressive early jungler. Now going to lock in the Zeus for Rendozo. Zoduro not looking to pick up the Giannis, so that leaves Allegiance with that option, having that global presence. It's going to be very tricky for Rendozos to play around. I mean, could you go just go straight into like the Thor Giannis, just have that global, that double global power? Obviously, I, you know, I know Weaken doesn't really like the Thor. Could look to go to it. Instead, it will be globals, but it's going to be in the hands of Incon. Athena locked in. You don't need Giannis right now since there's a Zeus pick. Putting Zeus That's and true. Giannis on the same team right away is a little interesting, a little spicy. But either way, Allegiant's going to pick up the Athena. More than likely going to be their jungler pick here. They don't want to synergize a good jungler for Randozos such as a Fender. Maybe they're going to take Fender away from Randozos. Um, another thing, too. Ooh, it's going to be Jing Wei picked up. We're starting to see... Her picked up uh, uh, frequently since she was allowed this week. Uh, teams really starting to respect kind of the not the range knockup on a hunter can be very powerful. 
the way she operates in the early laning phase, having her explosive bolts, having the throwing dagger, allows her to clear the wave really easily. She can always use her passive to get back and min-max the farm of the back harpies. And if there's ever a team fight going on in the solo lane, she'll definitely be there, especially with an Athena ulti as well. Hoon bots locked in for Skeelet on Randoza is looking there for their final pick of the first half. And it's going to be Osiris on the Waller. So like you suggested, uh, probably going into a very lane dominant uh, kind of this bully god that he can control and hope to snowball from. He had a lot of success against Marauder in the last set, second game against the Bologna. So oh, they're yes. going to try to emulate that same exact strategy where they might kind of lean on Maddie this game. And it's going to be dependent on Allegiance to recognize Randoza's strategy and adapt. Kronos locked in, so uh, a little bit of flare, probably going on the mid lane for Lassus. And he was actually playing this a lot uh, at the beginning of the split, I believe. Uh, this is a god that, like you said, Lassus is a playmaker. Kronos is a god that you can make a lot of plays on. Yeah, you go aggressively to begin with. You take absorb a lot of damage and cooldowns. You buy some time, you rewind, and you go back into the fight round two. And that's something that Lassus certainly loves to do. Uh, six, six, seven, banned away from Weak and Randozos. Don't want to be defeated by the meme. Uh, and it's going to be Hoi locked away by Allegiant. So they've got their duel lane locked in. Athena Jingwei starting to target out Randozos there. You can see they haven't picked up anyone from their duel lane yet. So they're going to have a little bit of an advantage there, keeping away the gods. I'm a little bit surprised, though, that we see the Sobek ban. Typically, Sobek uh, countered by Jingwei. The Sobek will set up the Zeus for an easy chain lining opportunity. The shield into the chain lining is going to be okay. a lot of damage. So even if the Athena dash taunts, the Sobek can counteract that, plucking the Athena without an Le escape, so, returning so a lot of damage. So less about the Jingwei being able to counter the Sobek and more like the Sobek synergizing really well with Zeus. Robin picked up. Robin versus Osiris. Both are these lane bullies. Who, who really wins this? I would say as long as the Osiris has his passive stacks up, that's going to be dependent on who will win in the laning phase. Ravana will start controlling the matchup as soon as he gets some levels on him. I think levels 1 through 6 will favor the Osiris, however. And Jablanke and Kumba for Randozo's duel lane. Allegiance looking for the last pick of their draft. They need a jungler, unless it is Athena jungle. I don't I don't see that happening, but I mean, Weekend has been known to play some spicy stuff, but it, it is gonna be the Thor, so we suspected that, but not a god that Weekend really favors. It's definitely a good god to get momentum in the early game. You have a lot of pressure on every lane possible, as well as synergizing with the long range Kronos, the Tectonic Rift into the Time Stop, Time Rift, Athena following up as well. I like the composition out of Team Allegiance so far. Is it? Uh, this is, this is a pretty well-rounded comp. Randos, though, do have a lot of damage and a lot of CC potential as well. Uh, we'll see if they can topple Allegiance's new lineup, though, as we get into game one. Polymer Mike looks for the taunt. He's going to find it on Verizio. Oh, nice wow. gap shield. Verizio forced to beat. Makes it over the wall. Oh! Scary D snipes him out. Really impressive. Scary D blind shot over the wall. Stand against the wall, and you see Skeleton bring minions towards the wall. Walrus, Walrus, turn it up this match. First yeah. blood on Divios. Looks like they're falling apart. Hey, they on got a no. couple of the top. So, game one here. Oceans has been the most consistent player on Allegiance, I would say. Kind of this hidden, he, he was kind of like the hidden gym. I, I think that Allegiance got really lucky in finding before this split. A lot of players and a lot of teams recognize his abilities and ranked. He does very well. He's very aggressive and he knows when to peel it back as well. A good opportunity for Allegiance when they're building a roster to pick up this hidden gem like you mentioned. And he's very hungry to you know join a team right now that's kind of new with not so new players mm -hmm. necessarily, but just new formation. And this will allow him to learn off of more seasoned veteran players like Lassus and Incon and Weekend. And uh, Lassus and Weekend. Popping early power potions. You can see they got a purple and red pot there. So looking to be aggressive early on. Randozos also, Aduro and Skilaran also have their power potions. However, Aduro not going into the Soulstone start. We've really started to see Soulstone kind of rise and be the, the go-to mid laner starter item. Instead, opting for the Vampiric Shout. Is this just because he's suspecting a ton of pressure early on? He wants the extra health and the ability to heal up off the minions? Having that sustain will help you last a little bit earlier on in the laning phase, especially if you're going to have some 1v1 poke exchanges between the Zeus and the Kronos. And if you're not expecting either jungler to come online, then you're going to be in a little bit of an advantage having that extra sustain versus Lassus who has the soul stone and uh, he'll be getting his red buff for now no cheeky invades just yet Aduro has been pretty quiet this season uh, in the randos we don't really ever see him go off we don't really ever see him you know play passive or excuse me uh, f uh, play poorly 
just kind of just been the consistent member of Randozos. And we do see the a little bit of a lane poke trying to connect that just quite off the mark as it did fizzle away on the shield. Junglers are still on the right-hand side of the map as there's going to be that. a 1v1 exchange on the left side mid Harpies. And uh, see Aduro try and steal it away. I, I think Lassus knows he's hanging around the corner. You can see both players on top of war. Lassus is going to start this up. Has his time stop. Looking for the last auto, and it looks like Adaro went to the mid lane. So going to be able to gain that control in the mid lane. Last will be a little bit pressured out, but it was Skeleton losing on the right-hand side, allowing Weekend to get those early fire elementals and look for these right harpies as well. And now Weekend is in a position where he's oh. trying to steal these right side mid harpies, but he's going to absorb a lot of poke in return. So Last has got the left side mid harpies, but he lost some gold under his middle tower while Weekend got the fire giant imps earlier on. And actually, aggression on Eskelodon. He's forced to jump away. No more health potions for him. Weekend also poked out. Both uh, junglers only rock and mana pots. Weekend, no hammer. Uh, and, you know, Lassus and Weekend, they were trying to get aggressive early, but it seems like they've been the ones poked out. Is Eskelodon going to jump to that? No, there's no way. I mean, you do have a red do you potion. Think I, so you have a red potion right now. If you lose that red potion for maybe a kill, then it's not worth it. Even if you do trade together, okay. one for one, it's still a little bit risky. He and takes the guarantee safe play because now that Weekend has the back, he has this free mid wave, and now he can rotate, potentially steal the back right harpies, whereas Weekend has to stay in the middle lane. Skeleton also has his own backs up. I imagine Randos are going to be playing pretty safe. Rando, oh, no. No, they want to play Skeleton aggressive wants it. because they, the middle wave is under Allegiance's tower, so Randos is doing a good job exploiting that fact. Weekend going to smell it out here, going to find Aduro in the jungle. Skeleton still focusing on these, and Aduro just zoning out for now. So Allegiance, I mean, they had the Thor and the Kronos, but they're actually the ones getting pressured out early. Just a little bit too much poke onto Weekend there. And now the fact that Lass is backed as well on this wave, that's going to give more control to Randosis for this mid wave. And now Weekend's going to sit under tower yet again. Sitting at level 3 currently, Skeledon almost level 5, probably will hit it off of this wave. What do you want to do with this, with this like massive advantage if you're Randosis right now? Uh, Skeledon heading over, I'm assuming, to those fire elementals. Should hit 5 off of them as well if he, if he solos them, but it looks like it's going to be a 3-man split here. Do we, do you think they should just like let Skeleton on solo these and get it five? Uh, it depends how close he is. Looking at the graph right now, it looks like he might not get it no. in the two-way split. It, it'll be sh it was yeah. very close. Also, those uh, back harpies left open the whole time. Elite, or excuse me, Rando's not able to secure those, and it looks like Weekend and, and Lassus have started to farm up a, a little bit more. Three minutes in, no real action. I think both teams trying to play safe. Now, Allegiance is, I'm pretty sure, out of contention for DreamHack. I think it's impossible for them to make it, but both of these teams just trying to make their way out of relegations. Randoza's almost secured, but Allegiance, they need to start finding these wins to get a lead over Envy. And that's basically the key for them. They're really close to Envy, and that's the one opponent that's going to determine who's going to go in the relegations to join Randoza's based off of it in the current standings. Weekend, not level 5, but with the help of Incon, going to be invading Skeleton speed buff. No way Kuma can get over here in time, and Skeleton's just going to concede the speed buff, so despite having that early advantage, they're going to uh, let their jungle drop, surprisingly. Allegiance did a good job recognizing that Skeleton backed at a very awkward timing. He did get poked out earlier on in the mid laning phase. He was playing a little bit aggressive, as we saw in the solo lane action. We missed a little bit of poke there, but either way, Allegiance doing a good job capitalizing on the Hunbat's back, stealing the speed buff away, despite losing those back right harpies earlier. And you see they rotated their dual lane over as well. Jingwei going to get the right-hand side harpy. Skeleton looking for a weekend, but a beautifully timed ult. Going to keep him out of danger. Might look to re-engage. Comes crashing down onto left syndrome here, and he could be in a little bit of trouble. Does have his passive for now, and there comes the sleepy time knockup. And it looks like it's going to be a disengage, but over the wall, Aduro helps Walrus lock it down in con for first blood. Really good positioning for Rendozo. So Allegiance overextends into the Zeus ulti. Now Lass is in a world of hurt getting chased down. He's going to fall as well. Matty forced to jump away, but Weekend comes crashing down, and you could see Randozos, or excuse me, Allegiance, really focusing on trying to kill that Kumba Karna and paid for it. They really wanted to synergize the Thor ulti with the Athena ulti in, on top of one target. The Skeleton was just barely out of range. They settled for the Kumba Karna. Unfortunately, oh, it wasn't the right target that they needed. Adaro by himself, and Weekend's come back from death here, looking for Skeleton. Incon going to find a two-man taunt, and there goes Skeleton. Adaro trying to get away, but getting chased down and rooted in place. Weekend finds the return kill. Matty Pocket locked in these mid harpies as Walrus is able to trade him out successfully here, but he's fighting 2v1. He's actually winning it, funny enough, trying to get the mid harpies, and I think he even managed to walk away with one, but uh, it looks like Randoz has got a little bit too greedy, staying too long there, losing two for one. 
They did lose two for one. However, they did get the first blood, which was really important. And the fact that Walrus was there now puts him in a position over Matty Pock, a little higher level. Osiris is a big bully early on. And Ravana only way back in is to have those levels over the Osiris, but it's going to be harder to stalemate that matchup. And the fact that Walrus had his passive up during that team fight was really important for him to maneuver around every single member from Allegiance. And Walrus now with a 400 gold lead over Matty Pocket and a level as well. Going to be pretty hard for Matty Pocket, who is already, like you said, in, in kind of this losing matchup in the Robin versus Osiris here. Walrus has been a really big part so far of Randozo's looking much better. Skeleton on here in a little bit of trouble. Has no beats available. Is going to jump away. Slowed. And there's the Fear No Evil just trying to keep him alive. But here comes Ocean's Airstrike. Not on the mark. Weekend's going to whiff as well. And it looks like Skeleton's going to make it out. But Incon continuing to aggressive as Weekend way too deep in the jungle by himself gets triple stacked. And Aduro finds a kill. And Allegiance, their aggression, it's being countered. And now comes the Lightning Storm. Is that enough damage, though, to finish off Incon? The detonate's up in two seconds. And the stacks don't fall off in time. Adero coming up with two kills in his own jungle. That's really important for Rendosos to get those kills. Very nicely timed ultimate from Mirkat, allowing the defensive escape from Skill Down, even having to use Fear No Evil just to escape. Golfieri is up, however, Rendosos not feeling quite confident enough to take this opportunity. A lot of vision control for Allegiance all over the Golfieri. Uh, yeah, you can see four points there, one at the mid harpies, one on top of the gold, and then two on that left hand side close to the lane, so they have full vision of Mirkat when he's going to be rotating in and out and weak in there starting off pretty rough he was a he's able to he got a kill on the return but you know dies there in that engagement and it seems like allegiance are going a little bit too aggressive i would say that's something that they're known to do with Weekend and Incon. They're trying to make the plays. Unfortunately, compared to the last time, the last was Wasilla. The Kronos early game is not as strong, not setting up that early burst damage that you would normally like. Does have a little bit more sustained damage with the mobility as well, so it's a little, you know, a little trade instead. I, I don't think Matty Pocket knew that Fear No Evil was down there. You could see him forced to use Mystic Rush, uh, expecting Skeleton to teleport to him, so... The cooldowns there not uh, communicated very well on Allegiance's side here. Seven minutes and 30 seconds in, and Randozos find themselves with about a 1,500 gold lead against uh, uh, Allegiance, the team that, you know, we thought would, I wouldn't say roll over this, but we expected them to come out swinging. We, we saw an early engage on the right side, but Harpies, and now with a chase that they tried to do on Skeleton, it's kind of bit... Allegiance a little bit too hard, and now more aggression from Mendoza. It's around oh, the speed Lassus. bump. Oh, Lassus. Lassus forced to rewind. Good talk from Incon, and here comes Weekend in the sky. Fear no evil, though. Going to spread out all of Allegiance. Incon getting chased down. Aduro finds the kill. Lightning Storm's right on top of him, not allowing Oceans to get in. Lassus swinging around from the back, trying to get some damage off, and he will hit Aduro, but no one in position to chase, and it's going to be another kill in favor of Randoza. They don't get the speed buff, but they kill Incon. And not only that, Oceans has rotated for this team fight, trying oh, to win it, and as a result, Meerkat is level 11, getting this Tier 1 tower in the dual lane side, a little bit low here. Lassus by himself trying to find Walrus, who's going to jump in place. Lassus forced to purify. That's not a trade he wanted. They do get the ult from Walrus, but I, I mean, for purification, not worth. Definitely not worth. Skilladon is going to try to take advantage of the fact that Lassus' purification is down. And if they can get that pick later on, they might look for an innovate somewhere. And Walrus right now has been a monster. 1 0 and 4, a part of most of the kills on Rantoza's side. Really strong rotations. Look at this. Matty Pocket, 140 seconds on his uh, on his teleport. Just got back to lane, already to half-life. And this is something that Walrus does a really good job with Osiris. He's known to play aggressive, and Osiris is one of the most aggressive gods that you can run in the solo lane, abusing the fact that Matty's under-leveled and also an item behind. Height of Nami in line on oh, wow. Osiris right now is going to mean he's going to be even more aggressive, especially being able to dive that Tier 1 solo tower. And Matty Pocket does have about a thousand in hand, so he's going to be close to his own hide or breastplate, to, or uh, excuse me, whatever he's depending on going here. And uh, Allegiance, they are getting pressured out so far. Uh, Aduro getting off a lot of damage and not really falling. You see four, one, and two on the Zeus right now. Has the shoes of the Magi's completed, has the Dynasty played helm, a lot of penetration online, and Allegiance have been unsuccessful in kind of diving him and then taking him out at the start of fights. We talked about the Zeus build, why he went Vampiric Shroud earlier on, and that's simply because they know the aggressiveness. Allegiance weak and able to barely escape that nice purification. Really nice. However, Adoro, he knows he's going to get dove, so picking Zeus here with Vampiric Shroud, oh, mid lane. a lot of turnaround damage potential. Mid lane, uh, left center, I'm going to knock up Weekend. There's a the Lightning Storm on top. Weekend, he's not going to be able to hammer in time. Skeleton could look to teleport as well, Lassus and Incon poked low, but it's not going to be 
anything happening. Walrus actually rotating over from the solo lane, but it looks like Encon should be able to back in time. It's Lassus who is actually going to get spotted here in the jungle, and this is Randozo's forcing Gold Fury, it seems. This should be relatively easy to do because they can easily disengage Gold Fury and go on Lassus. He doesn't have purification down. Skin on taking a lot of poke damage. Athena ultimate on top of Lassus as well, as Walrus tries to zone Lassus away from the team fight. Four man taunt, and here comes Ocean's airstrike. Not going to be enough damage to finish off Skilodon trying to chase him down. A Dural takes out Encon in the back, and it's going to be a one for one trade as Lassus makes it a two for one, but he's getting isolated by Walrus there. No more purification, just a matter of time before he falls. Matty Pockets made the rotation. Here comes Ocean as well, and Weekends in the sky comes landing down onto top of three. A lot of trouble for Randozos. Meerkat falls, and Ocean's trying to get away as Walrus is chasing him, and he's going to be able to. There's nowhere for Walrus to go. His ultimate is down. Really good job for Lassus baiting the rest of Randosos to come into the board camp, allowing Weekend to follow up. And Maddie's rotation as well was really solid. And now Allegiance could potentially do this Gold Fury as soon as Ocean's regroups. Three for one, and Skeleton forced back to base. You can see him just coming out right now, but it doesn't look like Allegiance want to risk doing it just yet here. No, they actually... Okay, no, they're going to go. They're, they're going to go, go for the left side mid harpies. Oceans is a little bit too low right now, and with members from Randosa's respawning, they're not really sure whether or not the teleport is up for Wallers. They're going to play rather safe than sorry. And just go back to farming for now. Adaro finds his second death. You can see him starting to work on Soul Reaver as well. Second in the damage right now, but War is coming in with 10,000, doubling anyone on Allegiance. And that's something, like I mentioned, you, when you have an Osiris, you want to play aggressive and extend your advantage any way you can. You know, being a big nuisance in the jungle around speed and blue, rotating because of your advantage and then you know, forcing the purification. So far, he's playing a really solid, aggressive Osiris. Do you just want to play around your Osiris at this point? Is it just like, let's not fight unless Walrus is in a position to rotate? In the 4v4, depending on how Allegiance plays, it can determine if Rendozos even want to have their soul leaners enter the matchup. So what I mean by that is if they're diving the Zeus, there's easy turnaround potential, and Allegiance needs to adapt to that because this Zeus damage is really high at 8,000, like you mentioned. And uh, back to farming we go for now. Randozo is still with the lead, but only 1,000 now. Incon trying to find a taunt on the left center, but he spaced himself a little bit too well here. Skeleton going to be joining up with his boys in the middle. 12 minutes in, uh, no no team really has the advantage, but as we head into this mid-game transition, uh, are we going to start to see Allegiance come more online, or do you think this Zeus, Kumba, and uh, Jablanke are going to start to do more work? It's going to be dependent on how the Thor and the Kronos will synergize together in the jungle side. If, as long as Allegiance has some vision control, then they can look for really good opportunities to poke some members from Mendozos away from objectives, and then Allegiance can look for a small objective play, whether it's the speed buff invade or the red buff invade, blue buff invade, or maybe potentially forcing the rest of Allegiance to come around Gold Fury. And uh, you can see Walrus actually rotating in the mid lane. I think he's walking... I think he walked over a ward there, so Allegiance know he's there. Left Syndrome, though, looking for Weaken, going to find the root, and Weaken a little bit scared there. Hammers away, wanting to make sure to play safe, and that was just Randozos trying to force purification, I would imagine. And that's also a really good idea from Left Syndrome because the fact that Weaken has his hammer maxed out, so that's a lot of damage taken off the table in the next couple of seconds whenever you can force a hammer from the root. Randozo is getting very aggressive. Left-hand side, Ocean's... Knows that Skeleton's in his jungle, but can't do anything. And it looks like Randozos are trying to find a fight, but they, they don't really have anything to invade to bait the fight. They do have the Hunbat Sphere No Evil, so if Allegiance groups up, that's going to be huge. Forcing the purification go. down, the monkey bounces do come out, but there's no teleport. It, it seems like the, the team doesn't want to commit on Incon there, and they're actually going to start up this Gold Fury. Wallers has made the rotation. Matty Pocket has teleported in, and here comes the fight. Actually, a three-man time stop. That's going to be big as Matty Pocket zones members in the back line. Left syndrome very low, and it looks like Randos. The call is to back off. They're looking for Matty Pocket, trying to chase him out. Weakens in the sky. Going to find two, but no help. There's the Fear No Evil getting turned on. And Randozos, they're actually getting oh, poked out pretty heavily right now. Right now, Lass is doing a good job, poking out a lot of members. Left Syndrome in his passive. He's going to get taken down by Lassus. The Zeus oh, ultimate the does come storm. out. Lass is not able to get rewind off in time. And now, Walrus just tanking up three members. Skeleton trying to find his way into the fight. But honestly, 
kind of a sloppy fight on both ends. A lot of burst damage unexpectedly onto Lassus Maddie there. Pocket. They got an early pick and then they paid oh, the price. Oh, Matty now. Pocket. And here comes Incon 2, going to find a 2 may taunt into the knockup on a Jingwei. Explosive bolts. There's Iron Strike. It's not going to connect, but Ocean's looking to reposition himself. Meerkat, no mana, no health. He's going to fall. And now Walrus is getting chased down as well. Allegiance doing a great job of kiting in between everyone. There's the shield over the wall for Maduro, but it's not enough damage. And slowly but surely, four members from Narendozo's fall. So yesterday in the, in the Eagers versus Source said, I mentioned Satman is known for the tactical feeding. This said, Lassus was known for the <laughs> tactical feeding. He gives up his life in return for three members for Randosos, as well as potentially the goal here, depending if Left Syndrome can do something about this. I, I mean, he's here doing a significant amount of damage to weaken an Incon. Incon completely whiffs on the top, but it doesn't matter. Allegiance are able to keep the Kumba distracted long enough for them to sell, to, for them to secure the Gold Fury and finally have a lead in this match. 1,500, you saw the damage on that team fight recap as well, pretty even, but Allegiance doing a better job of getting th themselves in and out. The CC control from Allegiance in the last engagement was perfect. The Athena taunted two members, the Kronos got off his time stop on three, and the taunt also followed up off of the Xingwei knockup. Uh, Lass is going to rewind here. Should be safe, unfortunately, for Randoz as they weren't able to read where he was going. But they will successfully steal away the speed buff. They're looking at the blue buff as well, but weaken. And actually, five members of Allegiance are rotating over to this right-hand side. Randozos, they've got to get out, and it looks like they will for free here. Just uh, able to successfully counter jungle a very, little bit. Very nice, small, marginal comeback for Randozos. Whenever you give up Gold Fury, you're always looking on the opposite side of the map as they're always on, they're re-backing after Gold Fury. They're a little bit low, so taking advantage oh, of that. And now Meerkat getting the left side tier one tower as Lassus rotates in. He is getting a tower, but you can see Incon charging his all. I don't see Meerkat getting out of this. There's basically no way. His purification uh, is not up, and yeah, Last is going to help finish him off there. Three-man rotation, no one from Randoz get to the side, and we've seen Meerkat make these very aggressive moves uh, in the past couple weeks. He's trying to play aggressive and and just dominate the 1v1 Hunter matchup. Coming from the soul lane, sometimes you look for those kinds of plays and transitions. He gets the tier 1 tower, but he gives up his life oh. in response. Allegiance is getting a little bit baited over there to the left-hand side. Weekend could have split pushed that mid-tier 1, but instead it's going to be Randoza's going aggressive on Ancon, and he's going to be trapped under that Lightning Storm meditation. Is it going to be enough? It looks like he may be able to get out of Duro as well in a little bit of trouble. Already used his purification, and now he's going to be caught trying to make some space. There's the Fear No Evil used defensively, but Ocean's diving into the tower. He's going to get body blocked. Airstrike will be enough to finish him off there. And now Ocean's in the middle of two players trying to find the auto attacks. There's Sanctuary, but no one to tank up the tower. Doesn't matter. Ocean's with the double kill. Left Cinder bailed out, and Skeleton was left in the 1v1, and Ocean's just has too much damage right now. A four-level advantage over the Hunbats. We mentioned earlier on, Oceans is very aggressive. He knows when to make the plays, and the rest of his team is backing him up to get away from it all. That last engagement, a lot of members were really low from both teams being able to get, get away, but Allegiance just comes out on top. Really good play from Oceans. I, I wonder like, if there was a, if we had a stat for Allegiance players getting below 10% health and then getting out. I feel, that's got to be like super high right now. We've seen so many instances where they just barely escape. And that's because of how comfortable they are making these aggressive plays and knowing just from their sheer experience of playing the game for so long of knowing when to retreat. And uh, now Allegiance what, did lose two towers in the process, so their their gold lead has uh, gone down a little bit. Still about a, a thousand in the lead. But I mean, this this game is still dead even, right? 18 minutes in, the Zeus level 15. The the problem right now is is probably the Hunters. The Hunters on both sides have a pretty significant XP advantage against these middles and the mids and junglers. So, yeah, you, as a result, you have to be very careful about how you position yourself against these Hunters, especially considering the fact that if you aggress towards Allegiance, you're going to get taunted into the Xingwei knockup. And they're looking for Lassus here. He's going to force Purify and Rewind. In Incon going to be helping him there, reducing a little bit of that damage, but Left Syndrome finds the perfect Mez. Sanctuary used as Walrus rotates over as well, but it's going to be Incon caught between all four members. Walrus flung to the back line, trying to get out. He's going to manage to successfully here. And now Weaken in the sky, looking at the back line, comes down on top of three, immediately knocked up though. Really good job coming out from Left Syndrome, and he's going to be able to get away. Very low. Meditation popped here, and now Randozo's forced under their tower. Incon trying to be aggressive, finds the taunt onto Aduro. Nowhere to go. He's going to be knocked up back into the rest of Allegiance as Lassus finds the last hit. Lassus absorbing a lot of cooldowns at the beginning of the team fight, and now finally able to close it out with the Athena Taunt Xingwei knockup onto Aduro. Now Allegiance having this 5v4 power play, going to go for the speed buff onto Weekend, and they might be able to siege this tier one mid tower. They want it. 
Uh, they they really want this tier one mid, but Randozas don't want to give it up. They're three members strong right now. Last is counter jungling. The blue in the meantime, and Randozo's getting aggressive, looking for Oceans, but Oceans just going to drop that Gust and knock up everyone. Randozo kind of split, but Skelodon's back from death, looking for weak and one more hit, but he's going to hammer out, and Skelodon can't chase him. Last is from behind, though, but he's 1v4, no relics available. Meerkat, Skelodon trying to chase him down, and it's going to be Walrus over the top there with the Spirit Flail. Last is trying to do a drive-by underneath, while the rest of Allegiance kind of just ran away on the top side, leaving him hanging, unfortunately. Not able to get that tier 1 mid tower, but do get a very Low, so the next siege, that tower should definitely go was, down. Was that allegiance to the team? Was that, or was that just Lassus feeling himself? It was. It was more of like an opportunistic play that he was looking for. That he thought the mobility from Kronos would provide him just enough escape to, to do the damage that he needed to do, provide be a distraction for the rest of his team to escape, and thought that he could get away himself as well. And we can gonna pick up his own speed buff here. Get the blue as well. Twenty minutes in, eleven to fourteen in kills. The game is very close. Uh, Randozos took the, a pretty heavy lead early. You can see Aduro and Wall are still topping the damage charts, but somehow Allegiance have been so slippery, very hard to lock down, and a lot of that coming just from, from Weekend. We've seen him get himself into bad spots, but still just able to get away every single time. He's always setting up his team, whether it's Weekend or Incon, specifically also setting up Oceans and Lasses. I love the composition out of Allegiance. You have the Taunt into the Jingwei knockup. You have the Tectonic Rift for the time stop as well. Allegiance can easily win these team fights if, as long as they play around their vision control. And uh, Randoza grouped up. Incon charging his alt here. Oh, Lass is forced to rewind by himself. Got a little bit scared from Left Syndrome. Left Syndrome looks like he didn't even use Epic Uppercut, so managed to hold it. And even if he did, that cooldown is very short as well, so it wouldn't matter. Matty Pocket going to use Overhead Kick to avoid the Poison Darts. Randoza is trying to force the Gold Fury, looking for a pick, forcing Allegiance to come out of their tower. It's been started up here, Adaro looping around the back. Meditation used early by Randoza. They want to make sure to keep healthy for now. They're trying to bait Allegiance into the corridor. Left Syndrome zoning really well, but there's nobody to follow up. Finds the Epic Uppercut. Oh, and now, and there's the Fear No Evil spreading out all of Allegiance. Lass is getting chased under tower, but Weaken intercepts. Skelodon still managed to finish off Lass's deep under the tower. He's getting chased out by Oceans, and he'll fall as well. But the Lightning Storm doing so much work, thanks to the help of Aduro. And Meerkat takes out Incon as well. It's a two for one so far, and it looks like Allegiance are going to be forced back once again. Randozo's not looking for the Gold Fury, though. They want to take this tower. Both Hunters doing a lot of damage that last team fight. Oceans forced the Purification away. Oh, as the wall. The wall was beautiful. Meerkat might be in a lot of trouble. Forced the Sanctuary away as Left Syndrome's in his passive. Matty Pocket trying to get the eight hits. You can see Aduro not going to be able to help him. And that wall from Weekend was absolutely beautiful. Uh, just right before Left Syndrome tries to get out of the tower. Just stopped in place and takes too much from the tower shots. Overall, two for two trade. Gold Fury still stands. The tier one tower for Allegiance stands as well. Tier one tower for Randos is falling a little bit earlier on as well. Looking like the team fight recap, uh, a little even. Two for two. So, I mean, I feel like Randozos, anytime they don't like lose a fight, it's good for them. Because we've seen Randozos, if they get behind, they can't win. If they get ahead, they struggle holding it. But like when they're even, when they're even or ahead, they're they're still very good at team fighting. Their objective play is is really their biggest weakness, is, which is why they struggle when they get behind and you know gold by a significant amount because they have no way to kind of counterplay. But I mean. They, they're still a really good team fighting group. And if you look at the team composition for Randozos, their late game is also really strong. Having Zeus and the Hunbats late game damage with Epic Uppercut as well, they can easily burst down Incon if he ever engages. And uh, we kind of saw that in that last spot where Incon has been trapped, especially by the Zeus, right? He's only got the Heartward online, um, working on what looks to be either Mantle of Discord or Spirit's Robe. But uh, starting to get ready. He's only level 13 compared to like the level 19 hunters, the level 17 mid. So it's it's pretty dangerous. It's not really normal to see the hunters the same level or higher above the soul laners. But that's just because there's a lot of team fighting, a lot of action in the duel lane. As a result, the hunters are benefiting from this. Uh, Walrus going aggressive here onto Lassus. We could force to all. It looks like Randos are doing the Gold Fury. Walrus was just the distraction, but he gets found out, and now he's going to be aggressed onto Weaken. Misses the, the stun, and actually here over the wall, it's Skelodon, the Fear No Evil, going to separate Allegiance once again. The team looking to isolate Lassus, but he gets the rewind off. Here comes Left Syndrome over the wall, finds the Mez, but it's not enough damage, and Allegiance doing a really good job here of disengaging, not losing a single member of their team. Left Syndrome gets the epic uppercut onto Lassus. No follow-up, however, from Randosa, so it's going to be a wash for both members. Walrus doing a good job avoiding the death from the Thor earlier on. Adora, first the purification away as Maddie Pockets diving the back line. Oh, you can see Lightning Storm still 
roll up and actually skill it on a little bit of trouble. He's going to get over the wall and honestly weakens wall, saving Randozos there, blocking off all the legions. They weren't able to chase in here, but they are going to be able to siege this tier two. Randozos, all five members are alive, but weakening going to teleport, try and find the lazy backs. Could get in a little bit of trouble, but it's going to be a Duro caught. Oceans, seven kill streak right now, unstoppable. Unstoppable as they get the tier two tower as well. A lot of members are really low for Randosis and they're forced to back in without having the Zeus damage for this next engagement on the Gold Fury. There's no way that Randosis can realistically contest this. Meerkat doesn't want that red to be token, but it's already been picked up by Oceans and uh, Allegiance waiting a little bit before they, they did the Gold Fury here. It looks like they're going to start it up now, but Allegiance have been able to reposition themselves. Meerkat. Skelodon hanging in the wings. Fear No Evil is up again, and he, that's Max CDR, and here it comes from the back. Oceans forced to purify. Skelodon trying to isolate members, but he's by himself. Oceans trying to chase in, but he can't. And now the team's getting chased away, and so it looks like trying to get that red buff didn't pay in favor to Allegiance. Really good patience and discipline from Allegiance. Not wanting to chase to kill. Oceans was thinking about potentially diving that with his ultimate and going for the kill. They had the DPS. They had the 5v4 advantage as Zeus was still dead in the meantime. Weekend. However, Weekend's trying to stop this. He might be dead here. He's going to get slowed and looking for one more hit. Skeleton forced to back up as Oceans trying to chase him. And in the meantime, Weekend just by himself left center trying to get the last auto. He will successfully pick up Weekend, but the Randozos, they're losing everywhere. El Skeleton dies, Meerkat as well. Wasn't even able to get his ult off, but Aduro, he's come back from the death, and it doesn't look like either team wants to force the Gold Fury still. So many dances around this Gold Fury this a game. A lot of dances, a lot of mispositioning as well from both teams. I really like the idea that Weekend had to disengage there. Really unfortunate for Left Syndrome. Chasing down that kill forced Skeleton and Meerkat to die. But if you leave Thor alone in that situation, he's still going to play around the team fight. Going to look for that long range tectonic rift and just a hammer just to get the poke off. Even if he is literally 5% or less health. And that's, that's one of the strengths we see of... Thor specifically, the ability to be impactful even when you've been forced out of the fight, right? Like Hunbats, all his abilities are like close range, except for like his jump, but you know, then you're basically dead if you're gonna jump into enemies. And uh, so Left Center able to chase out weak and not allow him to make an impact, but the team still falls and now Gold Fury. Once Look again, it's a, a Legions there. really want this. Walrus is stealing the speed buff away from Weak <laughs> before the Gold Fury gets started from both teams. And this is kind of the mentality you need to have as a solo laner whenever there's a, such a big impactful objective control on one side of the map. If you can exploit that on the opposite side, then that's really good. Oh, left syndrome. Gonna get isolated and picked up. Aduro here on the side. Gonna throw out a little bit of damage with the Lightning Storm. And actually, Skeleton trying to take out Lassus. No purification for him, but Skeleton gonna be having to jump away at Lassus. Oh no, Weaken in the back line gonna find Skeleton and Oceans. Once again, looking for Aduro. There's no way this Zeus gets out of here and one at a time, Randozos fall. That's the two for nothing trade so far, favoring Allegiance. And now with a passive, Walrus was able to go through the wall, but he can't get away from the chain CC as he's ultiing away and does get a stun off at the same time. Matty Pocket trying to chase him down though. He's one of the last two members alive and Lassus will cut him off, Meerkat. The only one here, no, uh, it's going to be nigh impossible to defend this gold for you. Just give it up at this point. At this point, if you're Meerkat, you don't want to die. You don't really have that much of a steal potential without being too far exposed to the rest of Allegiance. Considering the fact that you have a Tectonic Rift to block your path, you have the Athena Taunt, which will set you up for the Jingwei knockup as well. It's worth it to just not even bother trying if you're the Hunter. And Gold Fury going to get picked up for Allegiance if we go to the graphs. About a 6,000 gold lead for them. 6,500. So, you know, despite not a lot of objectives being taken, the fights have been going slowly into Allegiance's favor. Where before they had about 1,000 lead, but after, you know, these four, five, six engagements and that Gold Fury find themselves ahead significantly. And I just think it's purely because of the CC, like I mentioned. Just too much control. Randosos have to play around it. If they bait Left Syndrome into the first uh, line of the team fight, he instantly dies because the burst damage is still really high. Oceans benefiting from the earlier team fights has a lot of items online. So does Meerkat, however. I, I think my favorite combo, like we're seeing this synergistic combo, though, between Anka and Oceans. It's, it's probably one of my favorite things. The Gust actually go to, goes down first for Oceans, and then what happens is Incon taunts them into it, and because how knockups work, you're going in the direction that you're flying, you'll see him taunt players into it, which means they're also going to get knocked up into the team further away. It's a slightly overextended Athena taunt. So, you know, I love the synergy coming out of Allegiance as Randosos tries to get some vision control around Fire Giant, recognizing that's going to be the next potential objective that Allegiance goes for. And build starting to be uh, finished up here. 
You can see Walrus very tanky, went into the Bulwark of Hope, and Lassus going to get knocked up in uh, a very early Fear No Evil, trying to eliminate Lassus, but his Sanctuary is going to be good for now. Can't get his rewind off in time. Weaken lands down. Aduro's already taken out Lassus, though, and Weaken, he's caught by himself. The rest of the team is disengaging and quickly hammers away there, so a nice pick, and that's that's what Randos have been trying to do all game, and one of the few times we see it successful. It's a 5v4 advantage for Randosas, but they used all five ultimates. I'm sorry, Zeus ultimate just got back up right now. Oh, Zeus by himself? Zeus. Who's that? A little bit isolated, taking a little bit of poke. Weaken looking for that opportunity. Randos is looking for the potential tier two towers. The Meditate does go off. And they're going to be sieging this one up. You can see Weaken kind of conceding it on the right-hand side, getting a speed buff. But here comes the rest of the team rotating around. Last in a little bit of trouble. There's Lightning Storm on top. And Incon's just completely body blocked in. If Detonate comes through, he will fall. But I don't think it's going to be enough damage. Walrus chasing into a Phoenix. He's going to take out one. Ocean's going to get away. Matty Pocket now in the front line. One versus five. Not enough damage to take out a Duro. And it's going to be the Tier 2 Tower and another kill the way of Randozo. So still fighting back into it. Really good job from Walrus being able to zone the back line. We had a really good synergy between Weaken and Matty Pocket. Coming from the backhand side with that Tectonic Rift, not allowing the escape for Meerkat. However, the damage just wasn't enough to secure those kills. Aduro and Meerkat were extremely low, as well as left Syndrome before they escaped. Oceans. Uh, wants the speed buff. You can see the gust. He's uh, keeping the speed buff active. Skeleton will secure it, but starting to shred through Walrus there. You could really see this build coming out from him. He's got Titan's Bait online. He's got Pin for Mikfile. He's got Pin for Mossy, and as well as Chin Size. So Walrus not going to be able to kind of zone him out one v one like he had been doing most of the game. No, he's going to try to zone somebody out. And if he can, if he can zone out Oceans, that's going to be the most important thing. He has the physical defense from the hide. He has the health pool. He also has the constant slows from the Frostbound Hammer. So I like this style build. It's also going to be hard to slow him down, obviously, when the Wing Blade. So as long as Rendosos can find the early pick on Salas is the way that they consistently oh, they're doing, doing it. then they can be ahead. But this time it's it's on to Oceans and he's trying to get his airstrike away. Actually, I think he messed himself up. He got knocked up in the gust and couldn't react in time. Matty Pocket now getting isolated as well. One versus four. His mantle of discord going to try and keep him alive, but it's not going to be enough. And that's two kills. Oceans shooting himself in his own foot there. It's going to be hard for Rendosas to get this fire giant, however, even with those two picks. A lot of damage is off the board. Oceans is not there, and now the tanky front line from Matty Pocket I, not available as well. I think Oceans dashed into a wall and then dropped his knockup and actually CC'd himself, unfortunately. Fire Giant, though, started up here at 50%. Incon and Lass is waiting around the corner. They're going to try and steal. But, I mean, in the mid lane, look, it's actually going to be a split push. The Legions are able to steal the Fire Giant over the wall. Incon and Lass is combined. And right now, Randozos, they're losing a Phoenix. Lassus is just stopping the backs right now. He doesn't even care about this fight. The damage is going to get negated by the rewind. Lassus is going to try to get another kill, potentially, onto Skeleton. Middle Phoenix does fall. Allegiance steals the Fire Giant away. This is so demoralizing right now if you're Randozos. Oh, you just no. Got, you just got two picks and now you lose two important objectives and you lose th a few members. And Skeleton just getting completely outplayed by Lassus there. Doesn't even have Polynomicon online. Those those were just the raw auto attacks from Kronos just shredding through this monkey who has no magical protection online, no health base either. So we look at Weaken joining the team and Lassus doing his best Weaken impersonation with his scoreline being <laughs> at 6-6-7. Six, six, this is just, you can't you can't, from, this you can't escape from that meme. No, it's ever. always going to happen. Didn't Oceans also have 667 damage at one point? Uh, I For a think while so. when he was playing that soul. He had the soul, 667, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was quite it a was, while. It wasn't as bad because 667 came from an Odin, Odin game where Weaken was in like 18 fights and missed every single ability. And it was like 18 minutes in. And soul was just far. But still, still, this is, this is the... I don't want to say it's the meme team because we still got, you know, we got the, the orange, orange dogs. Meme. Yeah, the orange meme esports. Uh... Allegiance, though, somehow managed to steal that Fire Giant away and successfully split push a Phoenix. This is going to be an uncontested gold tree for them as well. Right now, they're 5,000 in the lead. This should push them up to about 6,000. So uh, looking really good for Allegiance right now. Randozos, though, still have a couple towers uh, to be taken. So Allegiance are going to have to waste some of their Fire Giant time on those. The problem with that is the fact that while Allegiance is pushing this left-hand side, there's going to be fire waves flooding into the mid wave. So there's going to be constant defense in the middle, and then they're going to have to defend that left side Phoenix at the oh. same time during the siege. We can actually stealing away the speed buff right now, and you can see Allegiance want to siege this, but they're down a man, so they're going to hold back for now. We can actually TP's in on the left-hand side there, so he's in in position 
a little bit more here. He's going to find Walrus in the jungle, and here comes the Blink. The team's looking for Oceans, but no follow-up right now. Good Sanctuary to Oceans. Left Syndrome is going to go into his passive form as Meerkat still finds the kill onto Oceans, however, getting a stack. Oh, he's looking stack. for Lassus, too. Trying to find Lassus. Looking for the space, but Weakens going to come landing on top of him, stunning him for now. Sanctuary, there's the Fear No Evil, forcing Allegiance into an awkward spot. Meerkat can't make enough space, and Weakens picks him up. Lightning Storm doing enough damage to get some players low, but Incon still managing to get out, and here comes Lassus. Looking for Walrus. Batty Pocket to the back line. Mystic Rush trying to just slow down the players as Aduro is now surrounded. There comes the stun from Tether, though. Stopping Maddie for now doesn't matter. Time Rift finishes off Aduro. And that's going to be three more kills on the side of ALG as they look to take this Phoenix. That was a really good start to the team fight from Randosis, but they quickly forgot the fact that Allegiance does have Fire Giant, and they kind of have to respect the region coming out of that, and the Phoenix Siege push is too strong. And now just a single tower on the right hand side for Allegiance, and they'll have that Phoenix as well. Can we see Golden Hand real quick? So most of the players rocking at least 2,000. I'm assuming they're going to take this tower and then back off, play it safe. Fire Giant is responding in about a minute 40, meaning that they still have it in 40 seconds, and they are going to play it safe as Oceans does respond. They don't have that DPS available for the Phoenix Siege, as we do have a few members being able to defend that for Rendozos. So Matty Pocket here going to be finishing off his Bulwark, potentially, or Pestilence. And... It's going to be Warwick, so wants to get a little bit more tanky. We see uh, full build coming up from Lassus as well. He's got his Polynomicon online. Oceans now full, fully critted out, has sold his Ickvile for Deathbringer, and uh, this, this builds, these builds starting to get real deadly. I'm really liking the Blood Share you can have Doom onto Oceans as well for Meerkat. The, the mobility that it's just going to provide is going to be very bloody, and there's going to be a lot of Doom. Do you, Am I supposed to like say something after that? I, I kind of tried to set you up there for something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna let you flop on that, that bloody and of doom. Come on, <laughs> totally. Uh, you could see Meerkat. You could see Meerkat. Uh, still not full build yet. Did he sell an item early? Because he should be full build. I think he sold an item early. Oh, he's waiting for the golden spawn right now. Okay. Probably going to be Deathbringer, I would assume. More than likely, you're trying to get that crit online. The extra damage off of your crit modifiers is really important at this stage of the game as a hunter. Meer Meerkat is always so deep into these team fights, Like, just getting surrounded. And uh, Aduro as well. He's actually done... Ooh, left Syndrome here in a little bit of trouble. Uh, you can see Fear No Evil going to be used to try and force Allegiance off. They get a couple purification, and left Syndrome is going to be out with the help of his sprint. But that's Fear No Evil not going to be available for the Spire Giant. Max CDR, four skill it on, so... About 40 more seconds for that ability to be up. And now with Walrus defending the left side, Fire Wave, it looks like Allegiance is going to try to exploit that by starting the Fire Giant. They do have a lot of damage available. They have Lasses on it. Oceans is trying to, he's trying to get a kill here, but he's taking a lot of poke. He got one crit and already half health. Yeah, Lasses uh, taking a lot of damage there. And Fire Giant's actually reset as it looks like Allegiance are looking for the kills. They don't really want to risk losing Fire Giant. They stole it away from Randos. That's that's even more brutal, right? Because Randos also had Fire Giant stolen away from them by enemy. That is just crushing to your mentality. They have to be so careful about recognizing where the members of Allegiance are positioned around Fire Giant. Obviously, Lass is from behind the Fire Giant pit, wasn't able to get pinpointed by Randosos and gets instantly stolen with that 1-2 combo. And you can see uh, wards in the jungle abound. One man taunt onto Meerkat, but it's going to be a double tap and forced purification as well. Meerkat's going to have to heal up off either creeps or go back to base, and the calls go back to base. Skeleton on the one over there on the left-hand side, making sure the fire minions don't push in. At this, If you're in those, do you just give this fire giant up and fight on your phoenixes? Well, right now, Skeleton on the left-hand side should trigger Allegiance to force this fire giant fight, or at least find some poke with Incon taunt setting up the rest of his team. Meerkat went back as well, and... Uh, here comes Weekend of the Sky. He's going to be looking for Walrus there on the left. There's a block A ult stopping his vision for now. Left Syndrome going to blink in, trying to isolate Weekend, and he's going to be knocked up. So that's going to be a good amount of damage, but Incon reduces most of it. And now it actually looks like Allegiance not going to be able to do the Fire Giant. Here comes the taunt, though. Two men onto Incon, and the knockup from the Gust as well, pushing them to the back. But Aduro going to be able to help enough to dissuade Allegiance from aggressing. Fear no evil as well, but Lassus able to isolate Meerkat in the back. Aduro as well trying to protect himself with the Lightning Storm, but the damage from Incon's dash is enough to secure him. Maddie takes out Skeleton. Only two members left alive for Randozos, and this this should be game one. It should be game one. Left Syndrome is going to fall as well once the last hits off of his passive do fade away and mid phoenix is going to fall right now left phoenix is responding but it's going to fall to that fire wave that's right there and allegiance should be able to close out this first game 31 to 20 in kills it was not the cleanest win 
for Allegiance, but they still come out on top of Duro, or excuse me, not a Duro, but uh, Randozo is continuing to show a little bit of life every time we see them play, getting very close, however, just not able to, to close out or keep their leads. If they got that fire joint earlier on, we would have seen a much different game, but the one highlight that I wanted to point point out was the fact that Allegiance played the combo between the Athena and the Xingwei really beautifully, yeah. utilizing the taunt, walking the members of Rendozos into the gust, and then getting pulled even closer. So that taunt lasted forever. Yeah, let's watch a little bit of Oceans there. Had a phenomenal game. Uh, very few mistakes coming out from him, and like you said, just the synergy with Incon on point. And he always likes to play aggressive whenever he can find a kill. At the same time, he knows when to not chase. There was a, an opportunity around the Gold Fury where he was very disciplined, as it, well as knowing when to dive in that this was situation. Beautiful. I mean, that's his own tower, but still just knocking himself up, repositioning himself to the back of the tower, isolating out Skeleton. And Skeleton seemed to be his target for a lot of these engagements. We, we, we saw him focus him out. You know, Skeleton a lot of times was the initiator. We would see him blink in and then jump out, and the, the ability to chase that down very well. Very useful. And there was a lot of targets that Skilladon was going for, mostly on Lassus as well. But he did a good job in the later stages of the game, just getting off a lot of abilities and being very mobile and annoying for Rendosos to focus down. Lassus was like just really, really good bait, I would say. Yeah, right? he got just that like one there's so three. many opportunities, like not only the rewinds, but like uh, stealing away the, the fire giant with the help of Incon there. I'm not exactly sure who got it, but after that also just like running Randozos around in a circle as we could split push the Phoenix and then he's able to kill uh, Skeleton as well. He's always the playmaker in Allegiance and the other teams that he's been a part of, knowing what he can and what he can't get away with. Unfortunately, that one time when he tried to go underneath wasn't quite and successful, but the other times he was really good about it. All right, what do you...